Are you punishing me for saying no? Finally, Lenny stops and turns to face you. He looks like he's been struck by lightning. David! He runs a hand through his hair and glances away, equal parts awkward, guilty, and... Something else. Scared? Okay, I, uh... I have to tell you something. Then tell me. Okay. The thing is, I... Can you hear that? At first, it seems like a pretty lazy tactic of delaying the conversation. But then you realise you do hear something. I'll put it off. <laughs> Come on, just... Just tell me, you bastard. Oh, the game's delaying it for us, how dare they? Like the distant rumble of thunder or cave-in? Oh, shit. Lenny's eyes are wide, his face hard with fear. Come on. He reaches out to grab your arm, but before there's a chance to do so anything else, the wall beside you explodes. Stone and concrete fly, and Lenny wraps himself around you to keep him shielded from the worst of it. You can just barely see over his shoulder the cause of the explosion, as hundreds or thousands of rats come pouring out of the newly made hole in the wall. You feel them brushing over your feet as they run, as one upwards back towards the mine entrance. That wasn't the rats. Fuck. Lenny releases you from his arms, but keeps a strong grip on your wrist. Does that say wrist or waist? Wrist, okay. Come on, we, we, we've got to run. He tucks you after him, but he's already removing, and the both of you run together back up the path you've just walked. An incredible noise comes from behind, and you can't help but glance back, only to see the part where you were just standing, now buried under a pile of rubble. That means run, don't panic. Run, don't panic. I've seen enough. I've consumed enough media to know not to pause. Just keep running. It's a terrible mistake, even if you waste half a second. All of those rats have sent the ceiling coming down. You run for your lives while the concrete crashes against the rock behind you. Nearly there. Come on. You can see the light shining in through the mine entrance and your body surges towards it. The rats are pouring out ahead of you, but barely three strides from safety, the noise around your head becomes deafening as the ceiling above bows and caves. Something strikes your head. Yeah, we're dead. I, I gave us five minutes last episode, we're two and a half minutes, and we look like we're quite dead. Pain cracks along the back of your skull, your vision flashes white, and then everything fades to black. Are we deaded? No. Are you conscious? Are you even alive? It's almost possible to tell at first. Everything is pitch black. You can't feel a thing. There is no sound. Then, as if a switch has been flicked, it all floods back. Everything hurts. Your head aches and there's a wet trickle running down the back of your neck that you know is blood. With some perseverance, you are able to force your poor body to move, slowly testing each extremity for damage. Nothing seems to be broken, at least. We're heavily fucked. If Lenny got out of here before we did, I mean... You blink, but the darkness remains. Panic starts to bubble and you struggle to calm it. You haven't been buried alive. That can't be what happened. With trembling hands, you reach out and feel around. Oh! You bite back on the panic again, as no matter which way you feel, you only find rubble. Above, you can now feel a low, unstable ceiling of unbroken rock that you dare not touch for too long. Miraculously, everything has fallen in such a way as to give you this small pocket of safety, but for how long? As you continue to feel your way along, your hands land on something that isn't hard rock or concrete, it's soft and still. Lenny? Oh my god, Lenny. Your hands move from his legs all the way up to his face, deliberately not dwelling on the fact that every part of him feels soaked. Lenny, Lenny, come on. You grasp his face and speak in a low, urgent voice. Lenny, please wake up. No response. You place your fingers on his throat and shudder with relief to feel the weak but steady pulse beneath your fingertips. David? I... I'm here. Alive? It wouldn't hurt this much otherwise. We're not... Okay. We're... Buried in rubble. That's a shocking thing to say. Yes, we're okay. Now is not the time to be snarky. It's almost the truth. Uh, I feel like I got hit by a building? Or a mine, I guess. Can you tell if anything is broken? Nah, I'm fine. Be serious, Lenny. I'm telling you, it's fine. There's no way that could be true. Just take your time. Try and move your... No point, babe. Lenny, 
David, listen, I don't hurt. I actually, I can't feel anything. Yeah, this is going to be the time where we're going to have to leave him, aren't we? It's like being doused in ice cold water. That's really not good. Yeah, I figured. Looks like we're done for this. Maybe we can dig out. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and maybe you could end up bringing the rest of the mine down on your heads. It looks hopeless. You shuffle carefully closer to Lenny and your hand lands on something sharp, his goggles totally broken. What's up? It's nothing. Now isn't the time. Minutes pass, maybe hours. Lenny's ragged breaths let you know that she's still there and still alive. Uh, I'm sorry. Hmm? It's all my fault. We must have disturbed the rats, sent them into a panic, caused the... He hisses in pain as he tries to shift, caused the cave in. I'm so sorry. You don't know what to say, so you say nothing. More time passes and you float in the darkness until you shiver. There was a sudden chill. Are you going into shock? No, it it's a breeze. Blindly, you drag yourself towards it and find a small opening in the rubble with your fingertips. You tell Lenny, but hesitate about opening it any further. Go for it. But what if everything else collapses? It'll be a quicker death, at least. There's no arguing with that. Grim, as much as we don't want to, you know, get in the mother and father way with him, I'm not sure that we want him to die, either. We... We do need him alive. He is the only company we have. Otherwise, we would just go mad. Yeah. <sighs> Carefully, you fill along the opening and push at the rock, widening it bit by bit. Eventually, the hole becomes as big as your head, then even bigger, until it's big enough to climb through. I'll go ahead. With no better option, you crawl through the opening on your belly, scraping your shoulders, elbows and knees as you go. It's a bit easier to see here. It looks more natural than the smooth walls of the mine. The cave must have opened a way into a cave system. Helping Lenny through the hole is slow work, but you eventually free him of the rubble. In this light, you can finally see him. It strikes you just how much he is bleeding. Oh, come on. Like... The artwork does not convey what goes on in this game properly. <laughs> this guy, I shit you not, was soaking in blood. According to a description I personally made five minutes ago. Soaking in blood. He looks like he just got a little bit too playful with a dog. But, whatever. <sighs> the cave is more spacious than where you were previously trapped, but still not quite big enough that you can stand up. Crawling on your hands and knees again, this time on an upward incline, you and Lenny head onwards. Lenny huffs and wheezes behind you, but keeps going. Together, you head towards the source of the light until you reach another small opening. You could probably squeeze through, though Trash might have trouble, especially injured. Yes, those three or four cuts in his face, I imagine it is going to be terminal. You help him through it first. It seems agonising for him, scraping through the narrow gap. <laughs> when he's finally out, he drops to the ground. Lenny! You squeeze through yourself and come out on the other side, bleeding from scratches old and new. However, nothing compares to the state Lenny is in. <sighs> Lying on the ground, breathing like every rise and fall of his chest is pure torture. Hey, you tear off parts of your shirts and trousers to bandage the worst of the wounds, but it won't be enough to stop him bleeding out eventually. You're not sure what to do, but first things first, you have to find somewhere out of the sun to rest. Come on, Lenny. Though hurt and barely conscious, he manages to struggle to his feet with your help. With one of his arms around your shoulder and your arm wrapped around his waist, the two of you start walking. Wherever you came out of that cave, it's led you to somewhere new. There's an old road, chipped and worn and barely even a road anymore, but it must lead to the ruins of a town or something eventually, right? You slowly begin to follow it. It feels like hours, and it could very well be that you walk step by painful step with Lenny. You walk on, increasingly taking on more of his weight as his strength drains. Uh, I don't think we need to be a cock in this. Just hold it together. Lenny is also murmuring, mouth beside your ear, barely coherent things. He's delirious and no longer responding to you. Eventually, you see a tall, imposing metal fence just off the road, or at least what's left of one. 
It's easy enough to step through it with more gaps than fence. Where's the fence? I, I don't see a fence. I see desert, and what could feasibly be a... I know what that is. A prison? Hard to say. Sweat stings your eyes, and you have no free hand to wipe your face with. It doesn't matter, since the sun keeps you half blind anyway. The, hor the horizon shimmers in the heat of the wasteland, and you can't be sure if the vague shapes you see in the distance are real or not. But you keep walking. You're exhausted, heart thudding painfully in your chest for so long, tired bones pushed almost to the point of breaking. Suddenly, all of Lenny's weight goes dead and you buckle under it. You both fall to the ground and he lies there unmoving. Lenny? Lenny! Beg him to wake up. Uh, I think shaking him's the best thing here. You shake him by the shoulders as hard as you dare with his injuries. He doesn't stir and looks inches from death. You try to pick him up again. You try to drag him. You're not strong enough. Frustrated tears finally start to spill, mingling painfully with the sweat. You're not strong enough. Making a decision, you get to your feet and back away from his still body. For the first time, you realise how much of Lenny's blood has dried onto your clothes. You take one step, then another, then you're running towards the distant blurs that may or may not be mirages. Help! You cry to anyone who might hear you, to the world that has forsaken you. Please help us! You run and run until your legs fail you and you fall. Then you lie in the dirt and shout until your throat closes. Please, help! Remaining strength fading, your head falls back, the sky is an eerie pale blue. If this is going to be the last sight you ever see, well, it's not bad. You keep staring up into the blue until a black shape descends and blots it out. Barely clinging to consciousness, the voice that trickles into your ear is distorted and muffled. Well now, this is interesting. What did I say about conspiracy? What did Tenarium, this guy here, say about other survivors? You can thank me later. Four days later. And you're awake. Even after the f past few days, you still can't get over the simple pleasure of soft, clean sheets and four walls to keep you safe and sheltered. You rise and get dressed. Simple clothes, but new and clean. They might as well be made of silk, how soft they feel against their skin. Skin that has been so damaged by the journey, reddened by the sun, worn by the sand, cut and ripped by mutants and falling rock, now almost healed. Many of the cuts and scratches have disappeared entirely, and the worst of them, the ones that are still healing, are at least clean. Once again, you marvel at how you've come from that moment, lying in the dirt, waiting to die. Well, now, this is interesting. You couldn't see where the voice had come from at first, fighting the encroaching unconsciousness. You tried to focus. How on earth did you get here, little thing? You remind me of someone. I can't think who it is. I mean, you're bald. There's no two ways about that. And you're either at an angle or you have the most... You're so unnaturally thin. Which would make sense, actually, considering how malnourished everyone must be. I never quite got how trash... Fuck, Lenny was so muscular. Oh, well. It was a person. Another person. A large man in camo gear stood over you, looking down with a bemused expression. My friend, help him. That was all you could manage before you blacked out. You had been brought back to what turned out to be a military base, manned by nearly 40 surviving members of a military force. The shock of it all hasn't quite worn off yet. Davette? You see one of the less intimidating residents of the base in the doorway. A mousy older gentleman with a thin, deeply lined face and warm brown eyes. He told you to call him Gamma and is the resident scientist around here. Oh, really? This is what we're doing? Come on. That's a silhouette. That's not a character. That... It's fine. They'll probably die soon. That's the only reason it's not a proper character. Sorry to bother you, but he's asking for you? It takes a moment, then your heart does a flip. He's awake? Gamma smiles. He's awake! You rush through the corridor accompanied by Gamma. They have to have done really bad things, and Lenny was, like, lying the whole time. It has to be. On the way, you pass by numerous muscled men in army fatigues. Being surrounded by people once again is such a strange feeling. 
and you can't help but naturally flinch away from them as you pass. You burst into the room, Gamma close behind. Lenny! Four days ago, when you'd woken up in the base, they told you that they'd found Lenny and brought him back as well. When you'd left him, he'd looked almost dead, and for the first couple of days after rescue, he lingered in that awful state, but they'd bandaged him up, gave him a bed, and allowed you to take medicine for him from their stock. For the past few days, he had been slowly improving, but still hadn't managed a moment of consciousness long enough to say more than a couple mumbled words. Now he's sitting propped up on his bed, eyes open. When he sees you, he manages a weak smile. Hey buddy, how's it going? Just just want to remind you guys... That, that plaster's sinking into his face. But, just want to mention you guys, this guy was battered and nearly dead. Four days ago. He needs one bandage on his nose and one bandage there. Uh, whatever. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's something there as well. That was obscured by my microphone. Smile, hug him, slap him. I'll now give you guys the choice as to what you want me to do, <laughs> okay? Do I smile, hug, or slap him? Your choice. Until next time, Smiters.